Two years ago, my fiance and I fell on hard times and we lost our home. I actually left and found myself living on the street with him where we had no money and a tent. In order to stay sober, I knew I needed to leave my fiance and get off the streets. I had been living in a field for about a month before I met Brooke. There was a homeless camp and I had gone over and invited them to join us for church. I was journaling in my tent, asking God for direction, what I should do. So when she heard me invite them, that's when she popped out of her tent and said, what did you say? I felt like it was a sign from God. Eventually I moved in with Brooke and her family. After living there, I became totally concerned about the welfare of their seven children. The children in the home often skip meals. Nobody watches them and they play on their electronics all day long. Most of Jason and Brooke's children have issues with fetal alcohol syndrome and mental problems. I was concerned that her five-year-old daughter was being sexually abused. I was concerned that it was her son that was behind the sexual abuse. I recognized child abuse because I was abused when I was little. I had no choice but to contact child services. Jason and Brooke were furious when I reported it. I do not regret calling protective services on them. My five-year-old, I'm explaining to her that she's gonna have to do an interview with a police officer. She was crying and telling me no. That's scary. Even I was neglected in their home. When I was recovering, I was left alone for three days. I thought they invited me into their home to take care of me. Brooke and Jason don't value my opinion because they think I'm just some homeless girl found on the street. I will not apologize for what I have done because I know that I made the right choice. I know that Dr. Phil will agree with me when I say, if you see it, say it. Okay, you've been backstage listening to everything, right? Absolutely. Um, first off, anything you want to say in response to what you've heard so far? Absolutely. When I was in your home, you had no problem with me there. And now you're on a show, you're literally a show. You've neglected your children so badly, you don't even acknowledge it. Everything I just saw on that television was a bunch of crap. You're Not too true. busy, you're too busy with everybody else outside of your home to see what's going on in your own home. If they have special needs, why are you putting them on the computers all day? You're neglecting them. Everybody else comes in your home, you neglect them. You don't even talk to them. Do you know what they need? They need your love. They need your attention. Are you done? Yeah, go ahead. Good. Fantastic. My children are loved. Are they? By My money? children even get in the to Bible go on trips that you shouldn't with, be using. You don't me. look at the money. I didn't interrupt you, did I? Go I ahead. gave you your time. Mm -hmm. It's my turn. I take my kids to school every single day and I talk to them the entire way. I ensure that they have packed appropriate lunches every single day. I talk to them on the full drive back every single day. I give them snacks. I help them with their homework. Then they get free time, God forbid. They have free time to choose what they want to do. Then we sit down mm -hmm. as a family and eat the home cooked meal that I make. And we sit down and we go through our favorite parts of the day at the dinner table. And then we shut the electronics off and we go and we shower and we snuggle and we watch TV together. And we repeat it the next day. That's normal, that's healthy, that's appropriate, and my children function at the highest levels that they are capable of, and it's because they are loved and they are stable. And you have no right to come into my home as a guest and tell me that my children are being neglected.